Ken, I'll play the role of the apps guy. I've got some applications ready to deploy on Kubernetes, and I'm going to set up an Nginx ingress controller ready to receive traffic and forward it to my applications. And Owen, I'm going to play the role of the infrastructure team. We've had big IP in our environment forever, and we have looking forward to actually plumbing it together so that you can get what you need time to market. Brilliant. So we can look and see on our Kubernetes cluster. Here are the Nginx ingress pods. There is just one. We have a very small cluster. And you have set up the connector container ingress services to link the big IP with Nginx. So by doing this, the Nginx instance is able to be plumbed into the big IP itself, and traffic can traverse our external network into the F5 and then down into the actual uh, Kubernetes pods that your application is running on. And we can see the configuration running here. First of all, we have no applications yet. The plumbing's all in place, and I'm ready to deploy my first application. Let's look and, and just verify there's nothing running. Like so. So we have an empty cluster. And the first thing I will do is I will deploy version one of my application. Like so. This has deployed the app. And currently, it's not plumbed through Nginx, so we can't get traffic in. The next thing we do is we create, we take an ingress resource here. And I'm going to paste the command in. This ingress resource will configure Nginx to load balance traffic to the application. You saw immediately an upstream group was configured in the Nginx cluster. And if we click on that and dive through, you'll see that upstream group contains two nodes. There were two pods, replicas for my application. We can then hit the application through a web browser. We're going to go through the big IP, through Nginx, and we're going to hit one of the instances of our app. So here we're actually seeing it plumbed all the way from the external internet through the big IP in which I have application services. I have my mm -hmm. default set of WAF protection, mm -hmm. and I have all of the availability and uh, established controls that I need from an infrastructure team perspective to then hand off to that ingress controller. Exactly. Now that my application's running, I'd like to deploy an update. I'm going to deploy version two of my application. It's a new set of pods. We can see the pods running, like so. Currently, Nginx is just forwarding traffic to the version one of the app. I'm going to deploy a new ingress resource. These ingress resources use Nginx's new custom CRD format, and they allow you to do a lot more things, a lot more sophistication in the kind of rules that you create. So here, we're using Nginx's split clients capability to perform basic A-B testing. We're going to apply this ingress resource to update the rule to split 80% of the traffic going to version 1 and 20% of the traffic going to version 2. Well, that's pretty cool. I, I, I've been hearing about this canary testing stuff. It's, it's nice that you, as an app developer, can drive that automation without having to come to me, the big IP owner, to, to make those adjustments or changes or rivals. And it's just as nice for me that I can make these changes, I can experiment with my deployment, I can bleed traffic from one version of the application to the other without having to work and raise tickets with the infrastructure team. Now that I've applied this updated CRD, the ingress rule, you can see that Nginx was very quickly reconfigured. We have two upstream groups. Those represent the two services, version one and version two. So now I've deployed the updated rules. 80% of the traffic will go to the green version of my application. But for illustration, the new version, version two, is colored purple. And if I shift re reload this a few times, then every now and then, so one in five requests go and hit the purple version of the application instead. I like this new version of purple for your app. <laughs> cool, it looks good. We can also look at the dashboard and we can see how the traffic has been split between the two different versions of the app. We can pull out metrics such as error rates, response times, and verify that we're confident that the, the new version of the application is working the way we want. Then. When we're ready, we can apply the final ingress resource. This is like you're ready to cut over now to, yeah. to this purple version as your production site. Yep. Yeah. So I, I, I deploy this. That kills off the old version of the application, mm -hmm. and I'm now running with the new 
in production. And we didn't have to talk about that. No, I was able to re-plumb the networking, but do that in a way that you were comfortable hmm. that the application was still being delivered the way it should be. Oh, that's fantastic. So things get really cool whenever we think about how we scale the application. Yeah, so this purple version is, is super successful. Yeah. And, and now you want to scale up. That's right. So traffic is coming in. Um, the purple version is it's, it's underperforming because it's running in containers. They have a fixed amount of resource. And yet the application is hugely successful. So we scale up and you can see. Oh, wow. That's happening like real time. Yeah, right now, these pods are being deployed. And as they're deployed, the Nginx ingress controller is identifying they're running. It's adding them to the load balancing pool. And now we have more and more capacity for our app. So what if like, you need to scale even bigger than this? Um, I think that's where the plumbing between the big IP and the Nginx controllers become interesting. That is. This, this is where it gets really powerful. This shows how you can bridge the divide and connect the F5 capabilities with the Nginx capabilities. So we want to scale our environment. We're currently running in a small Kubernetes cluster with just one node. And I'm going to scale it up to multiple nodes. So, so this is effectively increasing the number of worker nodes. Uh, and right. in my world, that would be increasing the, the pool members on the back end of the, the big IP configuration. That's right. So this is going to deploy the cluster across more nodes. We have the ingress controller set up, as, set up so that it runs a single instance per node. As we scale and add more nodes, we'll deploy more instances of the ingress controller on those nodes. That then comes back to the F5 system, which identifies it needs to load balance to more ingress controllers. We have a completely seamless end-to-end -end experience. As I scale my cluster and your big IP reconfigures in response. Excellent. Now that the cluster has scaled, we can look and see the Nginx ingress resources that are controllers that are running. All right, so it looks like you, we increased to three worker nodes. We did. Remember, we started with one. We had Nginx configured, so it ran one ingress controller per node. Now we've scaled to three nodes. We've automatically got three and Nginx ingress controllers. So let's see that on the big IP side of the house. So on the big IP, we can come into our local traffic area under our pools. And we look at the um, ingress virtual server pool, on um, which we now have three actual backend pools. And those are the, the three Nginx ingresses. Uh, it started off with one, now it's three. Yep. And I'm sure if you were to scale again or scale down with it, whatever your needs are, the big IP is going to auto-react to that. I don't have to, to interact with a, a change ticket in any way. Exactly. So I can control how many ingress controllers I've got, depending on the amount of resource that I need. And you've arranged that the big IP will always deliver traffic to the running ingress controllers. And then additionally on the big IP side, we can configure the application services that we need from a compliance perspective, as well as the operational visibility into the performance of the applications uh, for our operations teams to be able to take action if there's any production issues. So all that WAF protection policies I can put on the big IP, and you can continue to do your application development and deployment processes. You mean when you guys change the security policies, you don't have to tell me I don't need to update my application? Exactly. This is pretty much bridging that divide we talked about earlier. That's brilliant.